a chuk. There's a, there's a, a certain capacity limit to our courts. And if you arrest 1,000 people to the court today, uh, the only thing they can say is send them on to the man, mm. and we'll look at it later on. But the AM is also aware that throughout uh, you know, our, 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 our society, there are connections and connections to power. You will send somebody here today, and then the following day you receive a phone call. Oh, this person you took here is my this. Please, get him out. And these interferences make it difficult for the AMA to actually put his feet down to do the right thing. Mm. And I can see that they have the desire, they have the vision to do it, and it should be supported, but they're just not doing it the right way. The level of involvement and social mobilization that needs to back such an undertaking <laughs> is just missing. They're mm. just like, oh, we are AMA and we can do it. So law. AMA's approaches at at the breast over exuberant, not well, not well. Yeah, over exuberant. Yeah. Like that. And it doesn't record. achieve the results. It it should achieve. No, it cannot. It cannot achieve. It, it prosecution alone cannot achieve that. You have to accompany it with uh, IENC mm -hmm. behavior change communication. Mm -hmm. That whilst you are looking at the, the whip, you are also looking at the side that entice people to understand why they need to do the right thing. Mm. You know. The two must go together. You can't just pick one and run with. Mm. So the effort that they are investing in the enforcement, the another effort to have brought all the stakeholders together and also to have uh, uh, invested in a bit of behavior change communication mm -hmm. could have yielded more results than. Okay, uh, it's twenty minutes past eight this morning. We're focusing on sanitation in Accra and to and by extension our urban areas. If you notice, the AMA has tried to relocate the refuse dump at Achimota and um, it's tried in uh, in the past year to m ensure that all houses have proper toilets. This morning we're trying to an assess how serious our sanitation and water crisis is and trying to get a sense of what to do to resolve it. This issue is quite important at the ongoing New Year school for which reason we're focusing on it today. In studio is uh, Patrick Apoya from the Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation. Now, I'm joined by Samuel Enyankusi, who is a consultant for Cities Alliance, who have been working hard to improve our urban areas as well. Indeed, they are one of our partners for our cities, a program we do with the World Bank and Channel 2 Communications every Wednesday at 9.30. So, Mr. Enyankusi will give us a few perspectives on this so-called water and sanitation crisis, which is particularly affecting our urban areas. Mr. Enyankusi, good morning. Welcome to the program. Uh, yeah, good morning. How are you doing? We are very well, thank you. Do you agree when people say that Ghana is facing a sanitation crisis? Would you use the same strong words in describing the state of sanitation of our urban areas? Uh, certainly, uh, I share the same view as uh, most of you do in terms of a uh, sanitation crisis. And um, you, you cannot isolate uh, these issues that are all part of uh, the uh, global urbanization uh, 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 issues. So I think we have to be very, very careful in isolating uh, these cases uh, without looking at it uh, comprehensively. I see. So sanitation, uh, you talk about sanitation, you talk about water, you talk about hawkers, and you try to identify what might be going on, okay, uh, so that sanitation has, is, is as bad as we see it. And there are a lot of undercurrent, uh, under, underlying factors that really need uh, to to such a situation. So, uh, for city authority, city authorities, uh, our view has always been for them to look at these issues in a more comprehensive manner, because you cannot just isolate one problem and try to deal with it. It's never going to go away. So, backwards is 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 our sanitation crisis the result of policy failure, or implementation failure, or just human behavior? further before that. Planning. It's all a matter of poor planning, okay? Not, not being very proactive in our planning. You see, the city of Accra, how fast the city is been growing, it's getting out of hand. And it's coming with all the issues you can imagine. In the squatters, the slums, you know, traffic jams, uh, indiscipline. In tra it's a whole lot of uh, issues. And it's not just happening because uh, uh, of one particular issue, but it's because people are moving into our cities like never before. Uh, not until we, we sit down uh, as government uh, to plan and anticipate 
Okay, people come into a city and to expect what they have to do and engage them in a way. I think uh, we're trying to do some ad hoc, ad hoc kind of teaching making processes here. We pick one, one, one problem and we think we can fix that problem. And that problem is well. No. If you don't look at the related issues that affect that problem and plan well, okay, to mitigate that problem, I'm sorry, we're going to beat our heads about the bush for nothing. So the approach is piecemeal, and therefore we are not getting the needed result. But yeah, because, mm -hmm. so, in terms of area of focus, how should the? I mean, okay. So, which organization should take ultimate responsibility, or which body should take ultimate responsibility for where we are as far as sanitation is concerned? I think that's what we have been working with, trying to get city authorities. They are the, the institution mandated, or they are the local governments. Okay, who have been placed in the responsibility of, of ensuring a better uh, managed city. Okay, he's talking about city management. How do you manage the city in such a way that citizens living in the city will, will have a sense of belongingness, a sense of responsibility, and also understand their rights as citizens and also coming with their rights, also their responsibilities. And this requires some level of engagement, okay, between city authorities and the citizens. So you cannot be sitting in the, in the uh, city assembly planning one thing and then the people, or the citizens you are planning for, are not involved in the planning. It's going to be a failure. It's just a simple case of the, the hawkers issue that my friend Van der Poy has been grappling with and trying to find solutions to them. Okay? You cannot just deal with the hawkers trying to get them off the street. You have to understand how did that happen? If you drive them, where are they going to go? Okay? Are they going to go away from the city completely, or what will be the next level of action they are going to take? Okay, but if, if you have a city that plans and engages and they get the participation of the citizens in all these matters, I think you can reach some consensus that the discipline that, that, that we have been yearning for, the discipline that is lacking on our streets, in our behaviors, and those things will give us the opportunity once you create a platform for engagement. It gives us the opportunity to educate, okay, and get people's awareness so that they do the right thing. Okay, to me, that, that's the best approach, and that's what we have been trying to emphasize, particularly for city authorities to engage their citizens in the government. And we have to be very, very proactive. I see. So if there's one thing you want to, one advice you want to give to the mayor of Accra, what would it be? Well, I think we, we, we have been, I, I really share, share in, in his, uh, uh, the difficulty, the challenges that he's been facing, and I can understand how and appreciate the efforts he's been trying, trying to do to change uh, the, the city. See, but one premise that I always hold is that whatever you do as city manager, city authority, you want to make life better for the people who live in your city. That should be at the background of anything that you try to execute and do for the people to make life better for all the people. So again, it starts with how do we plan? People are coming to the city. Where are they going to live? Okay, how do we engage people so that we have, if there's a problem with their behavior, they can change? If we're going to have a bylaw, how do we ensure that people buy into the bylaw so that they can adhere to it and they can appreciate even the bylaw? So it starts with uh, planning, having a comprehensive city plan that will address all the faces and the challenges of the city, including sanitation, uh, water, uh, sewage, uh, traffic. You see, all these things have to come together, okay, in your planning. So that because one problem leads to the other. And if you try to fix one problem, it probably compounds uh, the problem of the other. So my simple advice, which you now I've shared with him a, a number of occasions, is to have a comprehensive city plan, okay, based upon which we can build. And then the, that city plan will call for the participation and engagement of the citizens. Thank you very much, Sam Inyankusi from Cities Alliance, talking to us. It's 28 minutes past the hour. I still have Patrick Apoya in studio. I want to share a few uh, facts from the 2010 Population and Housing Census on water and sanitation and these are very interesting for example 46.5 percent of households in ghana 
use pipeborne water as their main source of drinking water. 29.1% of households in Ghana use borehole or protected well. 9.4% rely on sachet or bottled water. And one-tenth, that's 10.6%, depend on surface water such as rivers, streams, dams, and canals and ponds for drinking. So 10% of Ghanaian households depend on rivers, streams, dams, canals, and ponds for drinking. Less than 1% of households depend on rainwater for drinking purposes. So that's for drinking water. When you do the regional distribution, Greater Accra highest uh, access to pipeline water, 64%. Central region has 53%. Ashanti has 50%. With the exception of Greater Accra, uh, where sachet water is the second after pipeline water, which is 28%, every other region, the use of protected wells and boreholes is the alternative source of water. And for Upper East and Upper West, 70% and 67% respectively use wells and boreholes as their main source of water. Now, let me go to toilets. Now, the proportion of households using public toilets has increased from 31% to 34.6%. So from 2000 to 2010, more people are using toilet facilities, which are public, okay, uh, which is an interesting one. Uh, also, the proportion of households that use pit latrines, however, has reduced from 22% in 2000 to 19% in 2010, so which is a 3% point reduction in pit latrines. Similarly, proportion of households without toilet facilities decreased from 20% in 2000 to 19%. It's almost the same, actually. So about one-fifth of Ghanaian households have no toilet facilities at all. Okay, and we are talking about development, we are talking about uh, Africa rising and middle class and all those things, middle income country. Yeah. There are 19.3% of households without toilet facilities. Yeah. The proportion of households using WC has increased, however, from 8.5% in 2000 to 15.4%. Again, in 2000, about 16.9% uh, of households have toilet facilities that are exclusively used by their members. Another 26% of households use facilities that are shared with other households in the same house or households from another house. And a small proportion use facilities, which is 2.8%, which are located in another house and shared in another house. And finally, on waste disposal, 37.7% of households dispose their solid waste in open space at public dumps and about one quarter dispose the solid waste into containers. Let me read this again. 37.7% yeah. of households dispose their solid waste in an open space at a public dump site. And then 23.8% dispose their solid waste in a public container. Significant proportions of households either have solid waste collected from home. So that's 14.4% of households have their solid waste collected by some agency or institution. And 10.7% burn their solid waste. They just burn it. Okay. Now, in the regions, most households dispose their solid waste at public dams, either in containers or in open space. However, in Greater Accra, about half of households have their solid waste collected from homes. A significant proportion of households in Greater Accra, 25.7%, dump their solid waste in containers. The proportion of households which dump their solid waste indiscriminately is highest in Upper West, followed by the Northern region. So, the main key, the key point is that for Greater Accra, about half of the households, 48%, have their solid waste collected. But the national average for collection is only 14%. 14%. Okay, which means that a lot of what is happening in Accra is not happening elsewhere. Exactly. And then 37.7% of households dispose their waste in an open space which means there's no management of it, there's no separation, there's no recycling. They just go and dump it in a so-called boiler. Patrick, what do these numbers mean for water, for toilet, and then for waste disposal? Good. Uh, let's take the water. Let's start with the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we will see the interesting things there. We, we are saying that 10, at least 10% 10 of Ghanaians are using surface water water that is not uh, uh, fit for consumption. Yes. Uh, we are about 24 million now. 
So we're talking about 2.5 million of Ghanaians are just drinking water that you are sure is contaminated. From rivers, streams, dams, ponds, and canals. Exactly. Just, I mean, just, I mean if you think about walking in the bush or just walking across, you see water lying down and you have, that's what you have to drink. Mm -hmm. Even for that, let's say you have a crisis for one day. How do you feel? Mm. But now think about just living on that water perpetually. That is your source of water from the morning, day to day, and throughout your life. That is the reality of that proportion of uh, that proportion that is not having any safe source of water. But you would see that the disparity between the access in the urban area, as far in, in, when water is concerned, and that of the rural area, that disparity is not as large as the disparity in the sanitation. If okay. you look at in Accra, where 50% of uh, the households are serviced, they have a, a home collection service. And then the national average for the same home collection service is 14.4%. It will tell you that the other regions, they're actually not being serviced at all, or it's, a, it's less than 10%. Now, these are disparities that are significant, and we should be worried about them. Because public health is not the kind of thing that is at the personal level of control. Mm -hmm. public, we call it public health because it is not within the domain of a single person to control it and therefore it is the public responsibility to control it if one person is healthy and another person is not healthy you are they, even those that are healthy are not safe and for a middle a middle income to, uh, income country like ghana if you take the the sanitation statistics the portion you talked about uh, uh, uh defecating in the open yeah those that are defecating in the open uh, maybe the national average is about 20%. Yeah. If you take that one, and you also take those that are using the public toilets. Yeah. And you take those that, the 20% that is sharing. All those statistics wow. are considered unsafe. So that's 20% without toilet facilities, 34% who are using public toilets. Yes. And then another 26% share. All that. So that's about 70% of exactly, the population. Exactly. That are just not using anything which is safe at all. Amazing. Now, you have I mean, the twenty-two percent for the pet latrines is also in that category. Mm, okay. Mm. Now, if you look at the shed, the tricky thing about the shed is that it is it would have been considered safe, but for the fact that it's being shared. Mm. So, in terms of the infrastructure, the technology, it is acceptable. Okay. But because a, a lot of houses are using it, uh, then the risk of getting infection from one I'm able to control what my family does. I'm not able to control what another family does. Now, if you are all using a toilet, one family's negligence could actually result in infection for all the other houses that may be a very bit careful in the way they live. And that is why the shared toilets is a big concern to the international community and trying to get every household own a toilet. You cannot have a middle country uh, swimming in this kinds of statistics. And to imagine that you are really going to be, to be attractive in trade, in tourism, and whatever, when statistics like this are mentioned, mm. it's, 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 it's a dream. Wow. Now, we are reading that Ghana, I mean, Accra is going to be the fourth most attractive place for tourism. But all that can be wiped out. In fact, that, that is just somebody's opinion she wrote in an article. Article. But she says four uh, top places to visit this year. And Ghana was number four. Number four. That does not mean that we are the fourth most attractive uh, dest uh, destination. That exactly. But if somebody says that, and somebody also looks at it, the, there's no person who travel to a place and do not ask of the public health profile of mm. the country. Mm. They always ask of what, are, what, like, what is the, the prevalence of certain diseases. Yeah. And on malaria now, there's prophylaxis, there is protective things, so people are not worried about. But when it comes to the sanitation-related ones, people get scared. And it doesn't really augur well for our, our, our middle income status. If you also look at the disposal, the, the, the crisis is not even in how the household waste is, 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 is collected. The crisis is in its final disposal. Mm. If you look at the 50% that we are seeing are serviced by households, today we are confronted with a crisis. Where to even dump that refuse, when we pick them from the houses, is a big challenge now. Now, Accra has no landfill, uh, uh, final dumping site again. All the dumping sites that we had are all filled up. There's no where that people, uh, the contractors who are contracted to, to, to take waste can dump. Uh, they are doing every effort to acquire one, but this not in my backyard syndrome, makes it just impossible. Nobody wants to have, you know, a, 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 a refuse dump near his or her a, a, a building or neighborhood. So even getting land now 
to even uh, construct a landfill site has become a challenge. Even AMA is holding the money, they can acquire it, but nobody is willing to list them for that. Mm. So what are the implications? Zoom Lion has money to build this uh, recycling, uh, the solid waste uh, recycling plant, but you know it's not all the contractors that are sending their waste there. So the crisis is reflected at the household level, but more seriously even at the final disposal level. Mm. And we are soon going to be stuck with uh, a new crisis of what we want to do with our solid waste as we generate. It's a big issue and 10% of households depend on the sachet water. I'm sure that feeds into pollution for gutters because it's become one of the fastest growing industries in Ghana. Yeah. People producing sachet water, yeah. which is partly a result of the fact that many people don't have potable water yeah. and actually depend on, on sachet water. What, what policy advice should we have for sachet water? Is it strategically a threat or a complement to, to, to the, 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 the regular source of water? The position of the, the coalition of NGOs in water and sanitation is that sachet water is a threat. Uh, for, for several reasons. First and foremost, sachet water has, it's no longer a service, it's a product in the market. And as a product, it is subject to all the market uh, uh, forces and all the market tricks, the, the, the marketing, the promotion that the product in the market would, 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 would uh, uh, pursue. Now, the, the, the marketing, the, the social water companies have managed to get Ghanaians perceive water from Ghana Water Company as unsafe. So, the, 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 the use of social water is not really about availability. It's about that, that wrong, I mean, a certain perception that, that tap, water tap water is, is not, not safe. It's not safe. Just imagine somebody, uh, uh, we have seen situations where the conditions under which such water is bottled, if you see it with your eye, mm. you won't even go near again. <laughs> but somebody feels that that water is better than the, type, the tap water that is running through the tap. And these are things that are damaging because water is a public good and it is a source of life. And governments try to ensure that its availability is not curtailed or is not restricted to only people who can pay. And that's why the price of water and the tariffs that they set are very low. A cubic meter of water uh, from Ghana Water Company is 1,600 times cheaper than that of sachet water. And if you are talking about poverty, and government is putting in place measures that ensure that even in your poverty, you still have access to clean water and wash uh, clean domestically for good health, you, you, you leave that and go and resort to uh, sachet water. And the sachet water, apart from the public health concerns, the quality concerns, there are also the issue, this issue of environmental pollution. Mm -hmm. So far, it is the biggest trust the biggest threat to environmental uh, uh, integrity. Mm. The gutters that are choked, nobody, people have talked. At least the Accra Plastic Waste Management uh, uh, Association, in conjunction with the AMA, have tried to promote recycling. And uh, recently, the NGO called uh, CHF International, they've all come to, uh, to see what to do about the plastic menace and the other solid uh, waste menace. So recycling, at the informal level, at the community level, at the group level, is actually now increasing. And perhaps if the AMA could lend support to those informal initiatives, those people who are going about picking the plastics, uh, selling them, and recycling them into more useful things, is perhaps the way to go. Because such a water has become a reality. It's not feasible to talk about banning it, but at least we can put in either a certain environmental tax, tax on it, and if you really think that you want quality, then you have to pay a tax for it. Because mm -hmm. there's the cost of cleaning the streets uh, that is littered with sachet is enormous. And I, I can tell you that if you contacted the AMA today, to look at what they go through in handling that. It, it contributes only 8% to the total weight of uh, plastic waste in Accra. But in terms of volume, it could be more than 50 to 60% in terms of volume. And in in, 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 in moving waste from one point to another, it's not only about the weight, it's also about the volume. Because how much can enter a truck at a given time is what the problem is. Mm. So, uh, such a water, for the pollution's point of view, is a threat. Mm. Environmentally, a threat. and in terms of quality, in terms of public health. Let me, let me bring you one last issue before we, we bring in listeners and their views. Um, we are told that funding for water and sanitation in Ghana is dominated by uh, development partners 
and for example, um, the National Waste and Sanitation Program estimates that sanitation investment in Ghana is less than 0.1% of GDP. So why is our government not interested in spending money on water and sanitation? Why are we depending on donors to, to solve a problem as basic as water and sanitation? That's, that's a very excellent question. And um, again, it's about statehood and the responsibility that goes with statehood. Uh, historically, uh, let's say during the military regimes, when governments were in shambles, a lot of the military regimes were more concerned with security, they were more concerned with the, the fiscal things that you know people could see. The understanding of how water and sanitation is packaged and uh, delivered uh, wasn't there. So it was left, and it was just the NGOs who stepped in. You know, when you leave something and nothing, nobody is attending to it, then somebody who is uh, in the side of, on the side of charity steps in to fill that gap. Now, as the state gets in order through our democracy, we're expecting a time when governments would gradually assume greater responsibility in providing water and sanitation services. In water, I would say to a large extent that has happened. The establishment of the Community Water and Sanitation Agency uh, has helped in instilling government understanding of its role in water supply. Uh, as far as sanitation is concerned, the solution has been to just cut it off and say it's the role of municipal authorities. And the government, central government has washed hands off sanitation. And that is where the problem is. The financing challenge we have today is because central government just feels that it is the responsibility of local government to deal with that. These are the small issues. Let us focus on the bigger issues. And as at last year, we will say the funding for water, 95% of it was coming from donors. Only 5% was coming from government. But let me be quick to add that even though we say 95% is coming from donors, if you want to look at it realistically and honestly, it will fall down to like 60%. Because out of that 95%, a good chunk of it is loans from the World Bank, from uh, the French government, uh, from other governments. And loans are things we pay for. So usually, ordinarily, it should not be computed as part of donor statistics. Mm -hmm. But the style that Minister of Finance uses to calculate sources of funding is a bit funny. And we have talked why they classify that way. Why would you classify a loan as donor money? So it is also created, the impression that government is contributing little is also created by the Minister of Finance. And somebody, something has to happen to change that, that way of classification. So in reality, government in water is contributing up to 40, 50%. Mm -hmm. But because of the way uh, Minister of Finance classifies this, the, the funding sources, lumps, grants, uh, loans, and everything together as donor money, we have a feeling that donor financing is dominating. In water, it is but it is sanitation that is very critical. Sanitation, uh, government is doing a more, but whatever they are putting in there is just a small fraction of what we actually need. Mm. Less than, less than ten percent of what we actually need to resolve the sanitation crisis. Mm. You know, there are policy issues that are still being dealt with. The SASEP, uh, that is the, the strategic environmental sanitation strategy and. Uh, 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 implementation and investment plan mm -hmm. was supposed to have been passed last year. And that spells out the national financing requirements to meet the MDGs. And if we pass that last year, cabinet, at the point of getting that SASE passed, the, fin the, the, the financing plan passed, something happened and it was like, oh, okay, you need more consultation on it. Some uh, ministries have raised issues about not being consulted and therefore go back and work on it. Now, we've lost all of 2012 and getting that corrected. If we do not pass or cabinet doesn't uh, pass that SASEP as soon as possible in 2018, then Ghana has lost out on the MDGs completely. Even the little that we thought we were going to recover would never be recovered. And for the coalition, that is our concern. The SASEP, if the SASEP is approved by cabinet, it is a found it is the beginning of government actually drawing out its own plan of financing or taking responsibility of its financing requirements. Then donors will now see where they can fit in. But right now, donors are leading in the financing, and government is looking at, where do you have, where can I put in? Then they will come and chip in maybe 1 million CDs, 2 million CDs. Even though we have you know, been seeing a gradual increase in the budgetary allocation for uh, sanitation in the past three years, 
it is still just a, a drop in the ocean. Okay. This is the City Breakfast Show. It's 12 minutes to 9. Ghana is sitting on a sanitation time bomb. Indeed, we are in crisis. Only 13% of the population has good access to proper sanitation. When we come to toilets, only 15% of Ghanaians have blue sea. 20% have no facility at all. And about 70% do not use safe toilet facilities. 10% of Ghanaians are still drinking water from ponds, dams, streams, and rivers, with only 46% having access to pipe-borne water. Almost 40% of Ghanaians dispose their solid waste in an open space. What I want to ask you this morning is, what is the situation in your area? And how are you dealing with sanitation? Whether it's waste disposal, water, or toilet facilities. What is the situation in your locality? And how are you dealing with it? We need to see how serious the situation is. It appears most Ghanaians have developed ingenious ways of providing for themselves what the state or central or local government is failing to provide. I'll take a few calls on the subject of sanitation and your situation. 0302 Share with us how you are dealing with sanitation. Water toilet and waste disposal what is the situation where you live how serious is it if 82 percent of if, if our, our water uh, mark is 82 percent i.e when it comes to the water mdg we've gotten to the uh, position where 82 percent of our population has water is that the case where you are how do you manage to get safe water what about waste disposal 0302-224959-226171 and two two six zero one three meanwhile i have quite a number of your comments that have come in on this subject now um martina says here in a shy man you always come across broken major pipelines with gallons of water gushing out wasting this scarce commodity but no one seems to care a zebra aqua says bernard the Above news is just to remind you of the situation in Takradi, which I'm disappointed at the non-action attitude of the Shama DCE in allowing this to go on. Nana Equia Fremabuzia says, hmm, ASM, I live around the district assembly in Dodua. No dustbin or refuse dump. I think they should distribute refuse cans in this very community. Um, Atakojo Mensa Ataedu says, it all boils down to attitude. A fellow colleague in the university tells me, if we don't litter the streets, who will be... If we don't litter the streets, others will be unemployed. I wept that night. Are you serious with this comment? <laughs> Let me take a call from James. How is the sanitation situation in your locality? How are you dealing with improving your refuse collection, improving water and your sanitation? James from Kolebu, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Bernard. Ben, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay, um, thank you for the good work that you're doing. Um, I think in my area, um, the sanitation situation is very commendable. Um, talk of water supply, talk of um, refuse collection. And the only problem in my area is the um, liquid waste disposal, as you already know, the um, the one around the Kolegono area. Um, that is the only challenge that we have so far. But um, I don't know what... Uh, you know, some time ago, the AMA boss was saying that we're going to construct a modern one that will um, situate that um, they, 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 they construct so that it will, it will convert it into um, fertilizer production and something, something like that that he was saying. I don't know how far they've gone mm. on with that project. So please, if you can find us for me, thank you very much. Thank you for your call. So for this liquid waste, zero three zero two 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 four nine five nine two two six one seven one. Taking calls on the subject of sanitation and how your locality is dealing with the matter. Let's go to Aisha calling from Mukonglo. Good morning. Good morning, Bernard. Good morning. Please, Bernard. I want. To, I'm working on. I'm a student in Lagos, and I'm working on water and sanitation in, in uh, low-income areas. So I basically uh, just came in during the last part of your program and I wanted to find out if I could get um, some information from your resources and if 
there's a way I could come to his office for some of the uh, sources for the Mm. Uh, to make reference to the cases, okay, because I have some percentages and other things. But in, I mean, if you write them, I need to have a reference. Can I All right. come to him? So you're, you're, you're a student. You, I will definitely let you know how you can meet Mr. Poya. But let's hope that your research does not stay on the desk. But when you finish, somebody will you use the findings to solve some problems. Aisha. Exactly. So just keep listening. Uh, Mr. Poya will tell you. Wait, Mr. Poya, where is your office? Uh, Asalam down. Mm. Not. Uh, just sharing what with the CPP head office. Okay, you share what with CPP head office? Yeah, but we are not CPP. Okay. Uh, just sharing what. <laughs> and your, your organization is the uh, Coalition, Coalition of, of NGOs in Water and Sanitation. So, Aisha, you can go to uh, Coniwas. Coniwas. That's the name of the place. Coniwas. And you can ask for Mr. Apoya. Let's go to Godfrey calling from Cantam Cantonments. Cantonment seems like a place with no problems at all. Godfrey, good morning. Good morning, Bernard. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Good. And then a sanitation problem in Ghana has been one of the major that I think the government should uh, sit down and with this AMA and the Metropolitan Assemblies to tackle it. Um, I want to just tell down to just, um, the, uh, um, the, the waste disposable issue. Um, I am into construction of this biogas thing where you can have um, this toilet facility that uh, you build the biogas and uh, you can convert the waste to gas and you bring, we, 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 are, uh, we are looking at bringing waste um, 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 beans that we will put in the decomposing um, um, objects and then the waste separately where we can give to the recycling um, plants people to do or to recycle it and then also we look at the one that can decay that we can put it in this biogas that we can when you construct after 60 years before you can open it and then as people are using the toilet facility it can be converted to gas right we, we have tried to at least get sort of finance all over ghana it's becoming a problem a lot of people don't understand so as you can talk in the opinion leaders that you can speak on behalf of people who have these ideas i think you should take it up from there so that i think we all help build this better ghana because ghana is good for all of us and so I will love to meet you one on one. All right. And then we talk about it and see how we can champion this waste management thing in Ghana. Thank you very and much, Godfrey. Thank you very much for your call. Zero three zero two 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 four nine five nine. How is sanitation uh, water being dealt with in your area and what is your solution? Rodney Neboy Texan says almost two weeks now we don't have water flowing in our area. Latebi Okoshi. We have a serious problem when it comes to sanitation and water. And instead of finding solutions, they rather keep changing the name of the they, they rather keep changing the name as if it will help solve the problem. This one is coming from Caldera Abroqua. Bernard, the scientific way to go with our waste is to do waste separation and recycling because with time the valleys will be filled and there will be nowhere else to take our waste. Have a great day. Prince Kweku says, We as human beings know the right thing to do but we don't do it but only come back to blame politicians let's rather change our attitude more comments ralph gaglu says i think my area there is correct water flowing but the problem is every day there's a leakage somewhere so it's posing a big problem and that in some places will get water but others will not and i think this should be dealt with richard Briby says water is a big problem in accra for more than three days now at Usu Regal Estate, the tap is not flowing. What we are to see what Mahama administration can do, we are really suffering. Danny Fox says, I think the AMA should do better than what they are doing now. Or better still, the Zulayon should be paid well to keep our city clean or recruit personnel to watch every community in Accra. Let's go back to the line. This time to the Eastern region. Messi is calling from New Tafo. Messi, good morning. Morning. Um, my problem is... I think it's the attitude of Ghanaians because looking at where I'm staying, I'm not, I'm not in the city, but uh, the place is always clean. I'm in New Tafo. 
in the eastern region. Uh, looking at that area, Chebi, Siakwa, uh, Buntu, and the rest, they, they keep the place clean. I don't know why Accra should, should be like that. Since uh, Accra is the capital city, it should be clean. So it's the attitude of Ghanaians and, and, and what they are doing that causes the place to be filthy, causing diseases and all that. All right, thank you, Mercy, for your call. Mercy calling from New Tafo. It's attitude of Ghanaians. A few more comments. Enoch answer says, Bernard, come see Reggie Manuel Estate in Kwabinya. Almost a year now, they have not given us access to pipe water. Nanayao Edusei Poku says, if it's water, there is much to do in this country. Looking at the distance of Weja and Kasua, and there's no water in Kasua, let's ask ourselves where we are going. Eko Bento says, I live in Takua in Siamu Municipal Assembly and our refuse dump is really gargantuan. In fact, it has become a burden for us living and it's due to the inconsistency of the intake. Don't know what that means. And then Gameli Bonuedi says, I'm living in Anyako, a village in Keta district of the Volta region without water for almost seven years now. I don't know what to say because I'm, uh, I've been talking over this for so long. Interesting revelations coming in from some comments, people not having water. Even though we say we have reached 82%, if you ask most Ghanaians the number one problem, most people talk about water. Even where I live, we don't have pipe bone water. We have to buy water every week. So it would seem as if in the way we even characterize the MDG on water, we've used other sources, wells and all of that. But when it comes to real safe water, most Ghanaians still can complain about not having access. Yes, uh, that's a very intelligent observation. Uh, and there's, a, it's, there's also a challenge with the way the UN calculates its coverage. There are, we have two parallel two para statistics in the country. The one we work with is what is computed by the providers. The providers, Ghana Water and Company Limited, that is doing the urban work. Mm -hmm. According to them, they are meeting only 64% of the country's needs. What they produce, 64% of Ghanaians, uh, they can meet their needs. When it comes to the rural area, community water and sanitation agencies also says about 63.8, almost 64 percent of Ghanaians would have, I mean, have, co have adequate coverage, based on the number of facilities they have provided, and also based on the number of uh, people who should share a borehole. Mm. Now, if you look at that status, that's what the national planning is working with. So, I think that is more that reflects the situation of Ghanaians. That's the, the national coverage is 64 percent. But the UN is looking at asking individuals in a survey, uh, where do you get your drinking water from? And if your source is one of these, they end there. They're not worried about the, the quantity that you, you, you use. They're not worried about the time you use to get it. It's not, that is not factored into the, the statistics of the UN. But if they had also put that in, we will be coming, we will get lower than the 82%. Mm. So the 82% is just, uh, I get water to taste. But <laughs> it's not saying that you really have enough all to right. solve all your problems. Let's take two quick calls before we end this. Edith from Sotum. Good morning, Edith. Hello, good morning, Bernard. Morning. Um, in fact, my problem is, I live in Sotum, Chauva, and AMA came in short, construct a uh, lorry station in front of my house. Constructing this uh, lorry station or bus stop, I can say, they didn't put a light, and there's no street light in Sochi at all. No dust be in front of the bus stop or lorry station. At the end of the day, every day morning, I have to clean myself. I don't know how much they pay me for doing this for them. And I don't think it's fair at all. Uh, is so to is so is so it, it is so bad. Is so to under AMA. I thought so to is Gas South or Gas well, West. I don't know whichever AMA. I don't know. I, I think you should find out whether it is the Ga West or the Gas South <laughs> District uh, Assembly that came to because it, I'm not sure AMA jurisdiction extends to so to. Yeah, anyway, anyway, I, uh, as you are there, I have been trying so many. It is the people who came in. 
Facebook, all these things. I've been talking to them, not nothing done at all. They say, so, uh, speak to AMA, speak to this place. I don't know. And every morning, I have to clean. Sometimes people ease themselves in plastic bags and put it in front of my house. This, this is ridiculous. I, I think you should go to either Wager, which is the head of the GA West Municipal Assembly, and talk to them because I'm not sure it's AMA. It's, I'm sure it's the GA West Municipal Assembly. They would be responsible. So you have to go to the head office in Wager and lodge a formal complaint. This is what I will say, Edith. Thank you for your call. Let me go to Emmanuel from Dakuman. Good morning, Emmanuel. Yes, good morning, Manet. You're on air. You know, I think the percentage of water coverage you're talking about in Ghana is actually to do with the number of um, pipes they've extended to places and not really the people getting water. And the second factor also is that if sanitation is causing about 70% of our health issues in Ghana and it's not a priority for any government, knowing that if we are supposed to solve our sanitation problem, then we might have cut down our medical issues in the hospitals by about 70% and no one is paying much attention to that, then I think our priorities are misplaced. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel, for putting it succinctly. Kofi says, governance structures for sanitation is ineffective. District assemblies only concern themselves with collection, but waste management is more than that. We need a fully-fledged environmental sanitation authority to map out a national implementation plan for the several policies, including M&E and raising of funds. What does Mr. Apoya think of this? I'll take his comments on this. Comments from Theophilus Na Owusu says, Ben, Sachet water producers are already paying taxes as business entities. They pay sanitation fees as well as various, as well to the various assemblies. The problem is not with the producers, but the consumers and the municipal assemblies. The information service needs to educate Ghanaians on waste disposal. Sachet plastics are not the only solid pollutants. The black polythene bags and fan milk products also contribute to pollution. Strong defense there from Theophilus. Kujo Stenilslov says, Bernard, Mata Heko's sanitation problem is so bad. Daniel Kumi says, Akwitia Saddam's sanitation is poor and is causing malaria. Benjamin Bonti says, it's very disastrous for filth to the envelope our capital city. It's about time the management got to work and stopped the lip service. So many comments coming in. What do you say to Kofi's comment and also the Theophilus defense of sachet water? Is the problem is with the produce, it's not with the producers, but consumers and municipal assemblies. Yeah, um, of course, uh, uh, his viewpoint should be respected. But from the public point of view, I agree that it is, when we say sachet, it is not just the one coming from pure water. We are talking about thin plastics. Our problem is the, the, the problem the coalition has is the problem of thin plastics. And that includes the one of used plastics, black polythene, thin ones, that actually will find their way out of your home after you use it once. So sachet water, in addition to all those ones, are included in the box of uh, uh, plastics that we think should be dealt with uh, in a more rigorous manner. Of course, we, we know that they pay taxes like soap uh, manufacturers, like uh, uh, milk manufacturers, but we're saying that the extra uh, pressure it exerts on the environment should be borne by them. That tax they're paying is just what goes, to, that goes for national development. And it is what everybody else pays. It's not everybody's else, everybody's else product does not pollute the way thin plastics pollute. And you cannot have somebody making profit at the expense of the, the, the country or the expense of all of us that the little money we get through taxes is used to remedy a byproduct of what you make money from. It's, 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 it's not fair. So that is what we are saying. But we are not saying that uh, uh, it is a bad thing. There, 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 are, there, are, there are also challenges with the users also. Why can't we be disciplined in the way we dispose of them? So I agree with him as far as that part is concerned. And finally, Kofi is saying that this is assemblies only concern themselves with collection, but waste management is more than that, that we need a fully-fledged environmental sanitation authority. So basically, he's asking for another body, an environmental sanitation authority, to map out a national implementation plan for the several policies we have. So it's not a shortage of policy. It's a question of a, a deficiency of action. Yeah, I agree with him that a lot of the assemblies are focused on just collection and it it's much more than that. But the argument of get, uh, putting in place an authority has been on for the past five years. Mm -hmm. and there are pros and there are cons. Okay. Uh, for us, just creating another body alone may not be the solution. It is about the, the, the dealing with the overlap of roles and identifying the different things that different players uh, have to play 
in the area of sanitation. I think that the, the difficult about sanitation is because the solution, bits and pieces of the solution of sanitation lie in their hands and that are very difficult to organize and difficult to bring together. You know, so if it is about elevating the existing bodies into an authority, we support that. But if it's about creating another body, we need to look at, uh, you know, the pros and the cons. An implementation body, National Sanitation Authority or something. No, the implementation body right now are the assemblies. Each assembly is an implement implementation body. Mm -hmm. The national uh, uh, level just focuses on policy making and providing the overall direction. But the implementing body, body as we have now is the local assembly. Unless they want to say we will centralize that, mm -hmm. and instead of getting it decentralized, we centralize, and that authority will be responsible. Mm. Uh, you have to look at it because it's a service that involves infrastructure, equipment, and the approach right now to use private sector to get rid of them might be uh, something we need to look at as against a central body that should be implementing the waste collection. Mm. Just finally, tell me what your organization does. You are the coalition of NGOs in water and sanitation. So how many NGOs are these and what is your area of focus? Uh, there are at least uh, 150 NGOs on the list, but hey. about... 150 NGOs? On the list. But you will have 60 or 70% wow. active at any given time. You know, there are... You know, <laughs> people exist. I mean, they come to register once. You don't see them again. But you're talking about 60, 70 active, you know, at any given time. 150 NGOs. And all in water and sanitation all alone. All water and sanitation alone. And we are talking about, uh, you know, NGOs that are either providing services directly in rural areas, those that are doing advocacy work on it, those that are doing capacity build, different aspects of water and sanitation. You don't need to be a water and sanitation professional before you be part of the 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 the, 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 the patient. Any person who has a passion to make a change uh, in the area of sanitation, and wants to actually amplify ordinary people's voices to the level that state can pay attention to mm. is welcome to be part of the coalition. Amazing stuff. Uh, my guest in studio was uh, Patrick Poya, who is from the Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation. Earlier on, we spoke to Sam Enyang Kusi, a consultant to Cities Alliance. And later on this morning, we'll be doing our cities. We dedicated half our airtime to discussing issues facing our urban areas. This morning we'll be looking at the issue of urban transportation. This program was live not only on CTFM but also video streaming on ctfmonline.com and indeed it will be available for a while on ctfmonline.com and also on CTFM YouTube channel which is called CTFM Videos. In fact, if you go onto our audio on demand page, you could hear an interview we had with the mayor of Accra recently on these self-same issues where he spoke to some of the ways in which the mayor and his assembly is trying to deal with the matter. So let me leave you with Fela.